Good afternoon, YouTube. Today's video is going to be about anime. Animation, like you're familiar with cartoons in America, except that are made in Japan. A lot of these cartoons and comics, uh, as they're known, anime and manga, being manga being the comic book version, the very unique style to them, and I'll show you what I mean in a moment. In America, comic books got a vibe as being something that is for kids, like toys or uh, video games, largely. Video games kind of rode on the back of, like, it's a toy chest. You keep it near your TV and you plug it in, and in the 80s, that's what it was really about. But in Japan, anime and manga are marketed to a lot of different age demographics. One of the first animated productions to come out of Japan was called Lily and Spider. But even before that, there was a piece of experimental animation that was found in a collection of projectors that was apparently 50 frames of animation on glass sheets. It was meant to be played at 15 frames a second. It's of a little boy in a sailor suit writing the words moving picture in Japanese, moving to the camera, taking off his hat, and taking a bow, or a salute. During World War II, they found a lot of motivation to fund animation houses that were producing basically propaganda to support the Japanese interest, but out of that push came a lot of very good animation houses that made a bunch of the classic animated films that Japan regards as being some of the best pieces of animation they've produced. Avatar The Last Airbender is a long show, but it is also a very good show, and it has a lot to do with elemental combat, internal strife, and one of my favorite pieces of animation, one of my favorite collections of animation, is The Legend of Korra, which is in the same universe, but takes place in kind of a 20s um, industrial revolution in New York called Republic City. It follows a woman of color named Korra, who is the new Avatar, and her external and internal strife following what she wants to do and how she fits into the world and what her responsibilities are. Next up, there was a show called Captain Harlock that was made in the 80s, and I've wanted to get into it for a very long time. I've only seen the computer-generated animated feature film that was generated out of the same intellectual property. I am now all caught up on One Punch Man, very gory. So if you're not into gore, you probably shouldn't watch it. There's a little, bunch of viscera, but it's all making fun of superheroes and what a hero means and what a hero is. And for those reasons, I would recommend watching it, but uh, ask your parents first. Then comes all of Studio Ghibli's creations, and this includes, and but is not limited to, Kiki's Delivery Service, uh, Castle in the Sky, My Neighbor Totoro, and Princess Mononoke is one of the best films of all time ever. All of these films have a strong bent towards uh, the natural. They all deal with themes that involve nature, returning to nature, how humans interact with nature, and how we build civilizations, things like that. And if you do searches on the internet, I'm sure you can find a chibi version of any character from any anime ever because they're very easy to draw. They have large heads and huge eyes and kind of have a baby-like proportion, but you know, they're super cute, so everybody makes them. Last but not least, an anime that I've watched from cover to cover is Oren High School Host Club. It's about a girl cross-dressing as a guy to try and blend in and have a better time in, in her weird boarding high school. It's very Shakespearean in that regard. So, I hope you had fun watching. Uh, if you have any notes, what's your favorite anime? Leave it in the comments. Uh, click the button and stick around. And as always, stay curious.